Well, you said there'd be a space exhibit here. And, uh, you know, I get a little excited about you know, space and planets and s stars and space and galaxies. It, it fascinates me, but I, I don't see anything. Hmm. Well, what I said is that we were asked to come help make a space exhibit for our River Kids theme this month. Um, so I asked you if you would come and help me, and you ran out of the room. So I thought that you had something else that you had to do. Wow. I ran out of the room to get my suit on. I, I, I just heard something about space and a display. I got so happy that I finally had an excuse to wear it and actually feel like I was there. Well, you're here. So let's, let's get to work making this space display. library in my house. This is a nice quiet room and it's great for reading and of course it's filled with all kinds of books. I'm literally surrounded by them. But I thought this would be a perfect place to talk to you about a special book, the Bible. Now 
even though this looks like one book, it's actually its own library because it's filled with 66 different books inside this one cover. Now all those books fit together to form one big story, God's story. And the people who wrote those different books, um, they all had some kind of personal experience with God that changed their lives forever. And there are all kinds of authors. Some were kings, some were prophets, or teachers, or fishermen. And each book and each author is different, but every word was inspired by God. So you'll find all kinds of different types of words and stories. Like, like there's, there's stories of adventure throughout the Bible. Like the time when Elijah prayed and called for fire to come down from heaven to prove God's existence. Or the time when Daniel was thrown into a den of lions because of what he believed. I mean, those lions were much scarier than these, I can assure you. But that would have been quite a story of adventure. Or when Joshua and God's people won that battle of Jericho and they had marched around the city over and over and then the walls came crashing down. Another big story of adventure. And then there are other types of words like words of wisdom that you'll read in the Bible. Um, words of wisdom about trusting in God. Like if we look in Proverbs, in Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6, it says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. Seek His will, and He will direct your paths. Great words of wisdom. And then there are also some words, they're wise, but they seem kind of funny. Like if you look in Proverbs, I think it's chapter 26, verse 11. As a dog returns to its vomit, so a fool repeats his folly. It's really more gross than funny, but still wise words. And then we can read words um, that are more about encouraging. You know, we read all kinds of letters from Paul and 1 Corinthians. There's many of those where he writes to people to encourage them, to give them words that will uplift them and help them along the way. So in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, the very first verse says, I am so glad, dear friends, that you always keep me in your thoughts and you're following the Christian teaching I passed on to you. So that's really encouraging. That's just one example. And there are all kinds of poems and songs throughout the Bible, especially in Psalm. One of my favorites is 23. And it says, The Lord is my shepherd. He will give me everything I need. I don't know about you, but just hearing that, it just makes me feel better. So, the book, the Bible, is broken into 66 books, but it's also broken into parts. So the first part, or the first, the first kind of half of the Bible, is known as the Old Testament. So, the Old Testament is made up of 39 of those books, and I think... If you look right here on this shelf, I'm pretty sure I counted almost 39 books just on that shelf. It gives you kind of an idea to compare this to. And so God's big story starts right in the beginning with nothing except God. And we can read about it in the first book called Genesis where God creates the entire universe, including 
our earth where we live. And he makes plants and he makes animals and all of the rest of creation. He makes the first man and woman and things are perfect. Their relationship with God is perfect. But then the first man and woman disobey. They, they kind of reject God and reject the words that he gave them and said to them. So that perfect world gets broken. And that perfect relationship with God is broken too. So even though people turn their backs on God, he never turns his back on them. From the beginning, he's had a rescue plan so that his people can be close with him again. Isn't that cool? And he starts that rescue plan by choosing a man that we know by the name of Abraham. God promises to make a great nation from Abraham's family, a nation of God's people. Now, so the rest of the Old Testament, that first part of the Bible, it tells the story of Abraham's family, people that we know as the Israelites. And we hear about how over and over again, they turn away from God. And over and over again, he takes them back and he helps them along the way. He sends prophets to his people to share messages with them. And the prophets speak about a savior who will arise from the Israelites and save the entire world. Now you and I know who that is now. Um, but at the time, that prophet was Isaiah. And he spoke the special message to God's people. If we read in Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6, For a child is born to us, a son is given to us, and the government will rest on his shoulders. These will be his royal titles, Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. And that was long before Jesus came to earth. So that was a promise that the people were given. And as we continue through the rest of the Old Testament, there's nothing. Right? Hundreds of years pass, and that Savior doesn't come. And some of God's people start thinking that maybe he's abandoned them. But then, God sends angels. Angels with special messages, one to an ordinary teenager named Mary. The angel tells her some amazing news. And with that incredible message, that begins the second part of the Bible, which we know as the New Testament. So, the New Testament is made up of the remaining 27 books of the Bible. I think this shelf right here had about 27 books. It's a lot of books. And the New Testament tells the story of Jesus and his followers. In Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, we can read about how Jesus is born and how he becomes a kid who grows in wisdom, in faith, and in friendship. And we see Jesus as he becomes a man and teaches and heals and shows God's love to every single person that he meets. We also see Jesus killed on a cross by a bunch of religious leaders who didn't like what he was saying or doing. And then we see how from this dark, dark time, God raises Jesus back to life. Jesus had defeated death. And through the rest of the New Testament, his followers spread that news 
no matter how difficult it is for them. You know, some of them are made fun of, some of them are beaten up, some are even put in jail, some of them are even killed. And yet, thousands and thousands of people hear about Jesus because of them, and then they decide to follow Jesus too. And then, the final book of the Bible, which is called Revelation, that tells what it will be like when God makes everything right again forever. So God's big story, this whole entire book, which is a library, it's still going on. It's not over yet. We are living during that time between when Jesus lived on earth and the early, char the early church was growing and the time when Jesus will return to make everything right once and for all. And here's the most amazing part of God's story. You're in it. You're part of God's story. I'm part of God's story. So right here, right now, we're all part of God's story. So we can follow Jesus and share his story as we love God and love others too. It's kind of a huge job, but God didn't leave us to do it alone. He gives everyone who follows Jesus the power and the presence of his Holy Spirit. So his spirit will come and live in our hearts to help guide us. So sitting right where you are at home, think about this. You and I are part of the story of God. How awesome is that?
The more we read God's Word, the more we understand who He is and how we can follow Him with what we say and do. He can give us the power to obey. Like it says in Psalm 119, verse 105, Your Word is like a lamp that shows me the way. It is like a light that guides me. Kind of like the stars in the sky that map out the sky for us with light on earth. Yes, and it is sort of like that, you know? And our bottom line for today is so important. When you learn about God, it's easier to follow Him. So, make sure you find time to read your Bible. Some people have it as a book like this that you can sit down and read. I have it as an app on my phone. The important thing is to take time to read it so that you can learn about God. Yeah, when you read the Bible for yourself, you discover that God is powerful enough to create the entire universe. Yeah, and you'll see how He sent His Son Jesus to conquer death. And you'll learn that He has wisdom that can help you in any situation. And you'll find that this all-powerful, all-knowing God actually loves you more than you can ever understand, no matter what you might say or do. So, read every day if you can, and make it a habit. Hey kids, it's so great to have you join us online. Now let's talk to God together. Dear God, thank you so much for giving us the Bible where we can read your story. Thank you for including each of us in your story. It's amazing to know that from the beginning, you had a plan to rescue us. Please help us remember to read the Bible and learn more about you so that we can follow you every day. We love you and we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.